Right, hi guys, uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, geologic history of New York State. I'm basically just giving you the bare minimum of geologic history because we're kind of running out of time in the school year. And so I decided to cut a lot out of this. So uh, I would have done a whole lesson on what's called absolute dating and a whole lesson on what's called relative dating. Uh, but I'm going to avoid all of that stuff and just jump right to your reference table and, and just focus on the reference table. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is get your reference table out first. And you're going to open it up in your reference table to page eight and nine. It's kind of the centerfold of your reference table. As you can see right here, I have this display on the screen. So uh, page eight and nine is called the Geologic History of New York State. It is a very, very complicated, it looks very complicated and it's got all kinds of information on it. Uh, but I'm just going to break down the very basics of this. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my soapbox here and I'm going to start with uh, this uh, title right here. So if you look at the top of the page, it says Geologic History of New York State. What I'd like you all to do with your pen or pencil is write the word inferred in front of that title. And the reason I'm making you do that is because of what this is all about. Now, let's think about this. What does the word inferred mean? Inferred is an, an idea that we are making an educated guess based upon some evidence. We can't see it, we can't directly observe it. We're making a guess as to what will happen, what did happen, or what may happen, okay? So the idea here is that the history of New York State technically is all inferred. We don't know what happened hundreds of millions of years ago. Everything on this chart is a guess based upon evidence. The evidence is mostly fossil-based evidence but it's all not directly observed. And so we need to add this to the beginning of this title. And really New York State should change the reference table and put this in front of the title. Now, why do I say that? Because, well, if you look at the previous page in your reference table, go back to the, uh, sorry, the following page in your reference table, page 10, it says right here, and I'll zoom in on it, okay? You can see on page 10, the top of the page, it says, I can't get to it. There it is. Inferred properties of Earth's interior. We made guesses as to what was going on inside of the Earth because we can't directly observe it. The same can be said of the history of New York State. Okay, so it's all inferred. Now, that's the end of my soapbox. The other thing that's kind of fun to do, if you want to do this, is color your reference table. And usually what I would have done in class is I would have given you all colored pencils or crayons or whatever and said, all right, guys, why don't you color while I talk about this reference table? And if you want to do that while I'm talking here on this video, feel free. OK, so this, as you can see, is colored based upon the era. So if you look at the very top of this little section here called the Cenozoic is in red. And I colored that all the way across, and it goes right across both pages. The Mesozoic is another era, and that is in yellow, and that goes right across. Okay. And then the Paleozoic is this section down here, all the way across in green. And then what's called the Precambrian is all the time before that, and that's in blue, and that just goes down below the bold line there. Okay, so you can kind of see all of that. And while, while you're doing that, while you're coloring that, it might help you because then you can break everything down into different eras. Okay, so on page eight, you will see at the very top left-hand corner, it says eon, era, period, and epoch. These are all breakdowns of time going from very large amount of time to very small amount of time, relatively speaking. So eons, we have what's called the Phanerozoic, and the Precambrian. Now you'll notice that the Phanerozoic is a very small chunk compared to the Precambrian, which is a much larger chunk. Now notice how far back it goes. Millions of years ago, at the top is present day, zero million years ago. At the bottom is 4,600 million years ago. That's also the same thing. 4,600 million years is the same thing as 4.6 billion years. That's the estimate, estimated time of the, um, the actual Earth, okay, the age of the Earth, 4.6 billion years old, okay? So just a heads up there, and it does say that, estimated time of origin of Earth and the solar system. All the planets, they assume, were created around 4.6 billion years ago, okay? 
Um, and then you go up into this uh, area up here, the Precambrian, you have a bunch of information about it. So all this is very, very, um, they don't know much about it because it's so long ago. Okay, so they're making a lot of big guesses about what was going on before 500 plus million years ago. Okay, now if you follow this bold line down to the bottom, all that time is what we call the Precambrian. And after that, above this bold line, above 542 million years ago, you can see here, we have the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. So the Paleozoic is broken up into these time periods, starting with the Cambrian, the Ordovician, the Silurian, the Devonian, the Carboniferous, and the Permian. Then we jump into what's called the Mesozoic, which you might be familiar with these time periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. And then you have the Cenozoic, Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary, which are up to present day. Those can get broken down into epochs. Epochs are just kind of like early, middle, and late. Remember, early means the beginning of it, late means the end of it. Now, these are all broken down into time periods, as you can see here, millions of years ago. And so you can look at approximately when the Jurassic time period, for example, was. Uh, it was about 200 million years ago to about 146 million years ago. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And during that time period, you can see what life was on Earth. And so you see a bunch of things about the life that was present on the Earth. And most questions that are going to be asked are going to be asked about some of the details that are listed in this section of life on Earth during these time periods. Another thing to take note of, and if you want to just like kind of highlight this, you'll notice that there are some places where it says mass extinction. It's kind of a big deal, like a bunch of animals died all at the same time mass extinction of many land and marine organisms, um, mass extinction of the dinosaurs, which they suppose happened by a, an asteroid impact, a very large asteroid impact that hit around the Gulf of Mexico and near Mexico. Okay, so some of these large mass extinctions are kind of big deals as well. The New York State rock record, uh, this is what is recorded in New York uh, in, in the bedrock. And so we have evidence from these time periods in New York State. The rest of the evidence comes from across the globe, but we have evidence of this stuff going on in New York State. And so we have a lot of fossils that we'll look at next that are all related to New York State. But these are there are some gaps in here that are not recorded in New York State, but all of this is in New York State. Okay. Now, on that's basically page eight. It's kind of the time breakdown. On page nine, we get into some of the distribution of fossils. So I'm going to put my face over here now. All right, so fossils. There are some important fossils that are found all across New York State, and they are listed in A, B, C, D order. Okay, so you can see all these letters on here, and these letters correspond with the pictures on the bottom. So this is what the fossil or the organism supposedly looked like based upon the fossil evidence. A goes along with this little A circle right here. So this guy is called elliptocephala. And these have some really fancy uh, names that you might not be able to pronounce, but that's okay, you don't need to, okay? Now, the group of organism that these letters belong to is written kind of sideways. If you just tilt your head, you can see this, these organisms are called the trilobites. And the trilobites lived from this whole entire bar. So from the bottom here, all the way up to here. And you can see they went extinct right there at the end of the Permian time period, about 251 million years ago. So A, B, and C are all different types of trilobites. There's a lot of other ones, but A, B, and C are all trilobites, okay? I'll give you another example. If you look at letter L, Colyphysis. Colyphysis is a dinosaur, and you'll see that L is list listed in these uh, dinosaur time period. So from here, the bottom of the bar, all the way to the top. Hey! Now, if the bar goes all the way to the top of the page, that means it's still around. So we still have nautiloids. We still have uh, crinoids. We still have mammals. We're one of them, right? We still have birds. So some of these bars go all the way to the top. They're not extinct yet. Others that end obviously went extinct, okay? Now, an important thing about index fossils, we'll talk about it in a second here, 
is that the index fossil, wherever that letter is located, that's when it existed. A very short amount of time, that's when A existed. That's when C existed. And you can look at the time period, go across to the left-hand side. This A fossil lived around the middle to the early part of the Cambrian time period, it's somewhere around, I'd say, about 500 million years ago or so. Okay, so that's that's the time period in which it existed, and that's the only time in which it existed. That's actually why they're called index fossils, and we'll talk about that later. Important geologic events in New York State. Sometimes they ask about these as well. We talked about the last continental ice sheet, the the ice age that happened not that long ago, really, relatively speaking that did basically all the damage in New York State and changed everything. But there's other things that added to New York State as well. For example, uh, you'll notice the dome uplift of the Adirondack region. So when the Adirondack Mountains were created, it was right around there. Okay, so somewhere around 119 million years ago. Um, you can see other things in here as well. The Allegheny and Orogeny. The word orogeny is just like orographic effect. It means mountain building. So these are different orogenies throughout Earth's history, big, big mountain building events. The Allegheny orogeny was really what created the Allegheny Mountains. Okay, so some of these things that are in here are important. Also, you'll notice a big one. See that Pangaea begins to break up. That's kind of a big deal. Okay, we talked about Pangaea. And you can see over here on the right hand side, where they suppose the inferred, and I like that they put that in there, the inferred positions of Earth's land masses. So where they think the continents were at different time periods in history. And you can see here, this is essentially Pangaea before it began to break up a few million years later. Okay, so that's essentially all of page eight and page nine. Most questions are just searching for information about these different uh, fossils, about different time periods. Um, different geologic events. And so hopefully all of page eight and nine is pretty straightforward stuff. So let me give you guys some examples of some questions that you might face when you're looking at pages eight and nine. So for example, this one, it says, during which geologic period was Stylonurus alive and abundant? So what you have to do first is find Stylonurus. It's on the bottom here somewhere. So you're looking for a letter, Stylonurus. Ah, oh, there it is, letter N. And then you have to find letter N in the chart over here. So here's letter N, okay? And we're gonna follow that all the way across to the left-hand side and figure out what time period that's in. So if you look at your choices, you can look through the choices and figure it out. Letter N existed during the Devonian time period. And so the answer to this question is letter D, okay? Next one, which major mountain building episode is most recent? So these are called orogenies, remember? And those are on the right-hand side. And if you look at the four of them, there's Grenville, that's a long time ago, then Taconian, then Acadian, and then most recent would be the Alleghenian orogeny. And so the answer to this question is letter D again. Okay, so let's talk about index fossils a little bit more. Index fossils have characteristics which are important. Number one, they're very easy to recognize. You look at the fossil and you immediately know what it is. It's a very recognizable thing, okay? Number two, they are found all over the globe. They are spread out geographically pretty much all over the place. They're here in New York, they're in California, they're in China, they're in Africa, they're everywhere, okay? So they lived across the globe, kind of like humans, right? We live on every continent. Number three, also very important, they existed for a very short amount of time. And I kind of talked about that earlier. They existed for a very bit of time. And so that's why they're actually called index fossils. Okay, they are, they are short-lived, they're widespread, and very easy to recognize. Okay, now I showed you all of them on the bottom of page eight and nine. And these are all good index fossils across the globe. You can find them everywhere. Another thing that serves as a good index, not a fossil, but a good index, is volcanic ash. If you think about volcanic ash, when a volcano erupts, it blows all this ash up into the atmosphere, and then it falls down, and it sits on the ground, and then it gets buried by other stuff. So it's spread out all over the place, very easy to recognize, 
and it's very short-lived, only existed, only deposited over a very short amount of time. So volcanic ash actually acts in the same way. And we call that a good time marker, meaning we can figure out when something happened based upon these really short-lived events. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Here's a, a, a great map of the United States after Mount St. Helens erupted. And by the way, Mount St. Helens erupted, for your information, on the day that I'm recording this, May 18th, 40 years ago. Okay, so when it erupted, all this ash went up into the atmosphere and went up way, way, way high and then came back down again into Idaho and into Montana and all over the northern part of the U.S. over here. So there is ash up to a, a half an inch in some places, all the way up to five inches in some locations of just volcanic ash. And so this is widespread and deposited everywhere. Other volcanoes have done the exact same thing over time. And so we can look at different time markers of these different volcanoes and when they erupted, we know exactly when they erupted and we know what ash is belonging to which volcano, which is, which is kind of cool. So it serves as a time marker. Okay. All right. Now we can kind of use this information for a process called correlation. Correlation is the process by which we take different rock outcrops from different locations, maybe across New York, maybe across the globe, maybe across continents. And we try to match them up with each other, kind of like a puzzle. And we would have done a lab with this in class, which we can't really do uh, in this virtual environment. So we're just going to just talk about it. So we have to figure out which of these rock layers is the youngest by making kind of these puzzle pieces fit together. So column one, column two, and column three are all from different places, but they have some similarities to each other. We can find something in all three of them that exists that we can use kind of like a match. We can match them all up. So if you look, um, look for something that's across all three of them. And so I'll give you an example, okay? so. I picked a green shale. So you can see green shale is here, it's here, and it's here, okay? And in green shale, you'll see there's these fossils that are labeled B and C, okay? So those are the only fossils in green shale. So they're widespread, okay? And we're gonna match them all up. Now, here's green shale, green shale, and green shale. And what I'm gonna do is in my mind, and you'd have to do this kind of in your head, you would have to say, okay, column one and column two can fit together by going like that. Okay, so that's where the green shales match up. And that's where those green shales match up. Okay, so which one is the most recent? Well, that would be the one that's on top. It, it was deposited last on top of all this other stuff. So the youngest material in this column or in all three columns is the glacial soil. Okay, and we, so we use this time marker. We use these fossils. We use that widespread idea to do this process called correlation. Okay, and the best way to do that, again, is to kind of match up all three of them like that. Okay, now volcanic ash, we can use these, we can use the same process for volcanic ash. You can see it's on all three outcrops, and we could just essentially just lift these up and match up the volcanic ash. Volcanic ash is great because you can see where it exists. It's very, very easily recognized. Okay, so we can do this with fossils, we can do it with volcanic ash. And it's a great way to correlate to figure out when things happen relative to each other. Okay, here's uh, a couple more questions just to kind of finish off with our index fossil discussion, and then we'll be done with page eight and nine. So this question says, which sequence of New York State index fossils shows the order in which the organisms appeared on Earth? So we basically have to figure out, okay, which one is the oldest, which one is the youngest, and kind of put them in order. So I'm going to look for these pictures on the bottom of page eight and nine, and I'm going to move my face out of the way again. So which of those fossils is the oldest one? So that would be the one that was longest ago. And if you look at the letters, looks like letter A, this guy is actually this picture on the screen. So, or, some, or actually it's letter B, but it's, it's pretty long time ago. That's the oldest one, letter B for sure. Okay, so this picture has to be the oldest one. So that could be number one, or it could be number four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide, okay, which one's the youngest picture? So which letter is way up on top here? This is youngest, most recent, O and S. Well, if I look at O and S, O is referring to the mastodont or the beluga whale, and S is referring to the condor. So do we have a picture of either of those at the end of our chart here. Well, let's look. 
aha, there's the mastodont at the end. So that's the youngest. So that's oldest, that's youngest, that's got to be the right one. And if you look at these other pictures on the bottom of page eight and nine, you'll realize those are in the correct order as well. Okay. So that's a good, good question to make you think a little bit. All right, let's do one more question. Which index fossil shows that forests existed in New York State approximately 400 million years ago? Well, what does a forest consist of? It consists of trees, right? So maybe we have a fossil that looks like a tree on page eight or page nine. And I'm gonna look around here for a tree. Ah, there's a tree, letter Q, okay? Uh, so letter Q is called and Nerfetan or the Naples tree. So do we have that as a choice? Yes, we do, number one. And so there's your answer, number one, okay? And if you look at when Q existed, Q is right here, follow Q across to the other side. Let's see if that's 400 million years ago. Yeah, it's somewhere between 359 and 416. So that makes sense, okay? So there you go, that's page eight and nine. Again, the inferred geologic history of New York State.